Getting into med school is not an easy task, which means it's so important to get your preparation strategy correct from the get-go so you don't have to worry about reapplying again. And that's because there are those group of students who have already started and they're making that gap between you and them larger and larger. Hey guys, Archer here, a first year medical student. And on this channel, we focus on learning how to learn so we can be more intentional with the way that we spend our time so we can focus on the things that actually matter. I started my UCAT preparation not long after the summer break actually begun. And that's because there was so much going on in year 11 that I knew that there was going to be 10 times more things happening in year 12 as well. There is so much to balance in year 12 that it's just not worth putting UCAT on like a balance board that might fall over if you don't put enough time and effort towards it. I really wanted to make sure that I was going to get it on my first try so that's why I put all that effort towards preparing a strategy for the UCAT. At many universities the UCAT is actually worth the same as your ATAR and your interview and so what that means is just 24 minutes of the actual UCAT is worth all all the effort and time that you put towards studying for a subject in your ATAR. Now another thing for the year 11s moving into year 12, if you wanted to have a competitive UCAT, at very minimum you wanted a 90th percentile last year but now it's actually gone up to ha at least having a 93. And if you wanna feel safe and comfortable, you really wanna be aiming for the 95th percentile in the UCAT, which is around the top 700 scores in Australia. And that's out of the 14,000 that sat last year. And I know I'm saying last year, but what I really mean is the people who sat this year since we're in December. We're gonna start off by looking at why it's so important for year 11s to get started now on their UCAT preparation. Then we'll look at how we can organize our preparation to score a 98th or 99th percentile on the UCAT. And then we're going to look at what you actually need to be doing in that preparation from now. All right, let's get straight into it. Let me ask you this question. If you think about year 11 and how that was for you, would you feel comfortable putting five hours away a week to study for the UCAT? The answer is probably no. And this is what I found from asking a lot of students myself, but that's just gonna be absolutely insane if you think about doing it in year 12. If you can't think about fitting it in with your year 11 schedule, then what are you gonna do in year 12? Because that's even more important and busy. On top of that, it's extremely difficult to do this with all the things that happen during year 12. There's always gonna be those times when you're feeling under the pump in year 12. And so if you keep putting that UCAT further and further away, you're just not gonna focus on it, on it at all. And there won't be enough time and effort put towards it. And you really don't want that to show in your final result. Because like we said, with those three components, the UCAT could be the thing that lets you down. It didn't even matter how many times I warned the people who had messaged me and asked me for help with the UCAT about getting started early and keeping it consistent. They still kept pushing it back and back until there wasn't really enough time to focus on all of their mistakes and weaknesses to fix them up properly by the time it came to the UCAT. And so it showed in their result. If you start at, let's say, moderate intensity and effort that you put towards the UCAT and are spending around two hours a week focusing on it, that's probably still going to be achievable throughout year 12, but what you're gonna find is that the same issue happens again. You're gonna keep pushing it further and further back because there's more important tasks at hand. And so you're putting your entry of getting into a med school at risk here. The very best thing that you can do for yourself is getting started now and going at full intensity. By the time that you put in now, you're not gonna feel overwhelmed and stressed during year 12. And you already know that if you want to do well and get into medicine, there are sacrifices that you have to make. And that's what's required to get in front of all the rest so that you can make yourself a better candidate. You really can't expect to get great results if you're happy to sit back at these holidays and let everyone else get ahead of you. Ideally, you want to be spending around 250 hours on the UCAT and that's going to change depending on who you are and how much you're actually putting towards these hours that you spend studying. Although when you think about it, fitting in this 250 hours with your busy schedule of year 12 and even with these holidays is quite difficult. Okay, so let's think about this for a bit. There is only 168 hours in a week. After you take out all of the time that you have to spend studying, traveling, everything else that you have to do in life, there's not much time left. And this isn't even including all the time that you spend towards procrastinating and all that sort of stuff. There's really not enough time here. That's why it's so important to get started early. And so you're able to keep this up because the biggest thing of the UCAT is keeping consistent. And this is really important because in year 12, I was very busy. And so I didn't have that much time to focus on the UCAT every week. I can't imagine that I would have been able to learn as much as I could in the UCAT if I was trying to cram it in with everything else that I was doing. And so when you think about it, there's a lot to juggle when you're trying to do this in year 12. I was trying to focus on my ATAR subjects, UCAT preparation, obviously, my uni subjects, keeping up my social life and running my online businesses, for example. 
and I was also doing extracurriculars as well, like sports and going to the gym. That's why it was incredibly important to me that I got the bulk of my study done before year 12 had even started, because there's no way that I would have been able to do everything that I wanted to do if I had left that UCAT preparation too late. All right, so let's think about this a little bit more. If you studied for four hours a day, properly studying for the UCAT for 53 days of these holidays, then you'd be 75% done with all of your preparation already. Then that means you can just keep consistently doing one hour a week just in term one. And then in term two, you don't actually have to do anything at all. And that's just because, you know, term two gets more busy than term one, obviously. And so where the bulk of your practice then fits in for the last 25% is in those term breaks. And that's when school settles down a little bit and you can focus a little bit more on the UCAT. And you also have that comfort in knowing that you've done the bulk of your preparation. So if you do need to do a little bit more study to catch up, you do have the leisure of doing that. Whereas if you didn't start early, then you're going to have to cram everything in. By putting in the time now, year 12 will be so much easier for you and relax that you can actually focus on getting a high ATAR as well as keeping a high UCAT. This sets it up so it's a possibility to not drop one for the other. So I really just can't stress it enough. It's so important to get started now. The place that I got started with my whole UCAT journey was with the free workshops at ICANMED. This is actually where I began to learn how to properly prepare for the UCAT. They're running these face-to-face -face workshops in early January, starting on the 6th of January in Melbourne, and then there's going to be some in Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, and Perth as well. One of the reasons I'm actually telling you about this is because for one, it's just free and there's no risk in that. And then for two, there was actually so much value that I got from there previous to what I had looked at before. They're starting as early as the 6th in Melbourne, and then they're going to go off to the other cities as well. In fact, a lot of the content from this video has actually been from the experience that ICANMED has accumulated. And in this year, 71% of the students who scored between the 96th and 99th percentile were actually ICANMED students. These sessions usually fill up quite quickly, and because it's COVID, they're going to fill up quicker as well. Make sure to check out the link in the description and if you do decide to go with a course in the end, put down my name as Archer as your referral to get an extra $10 discount. All the details are down below and if you really want to get a good head start, make sure you don't miss out. So to actually get better at the UCAT now, you need to build up a basic competency of the techniques and strategies and thinking processes that you need to answer each question type of the UCAT. This checklist that you have to answering this question should be absolutely bulletproof and an algorithm that you follow exactly every time you go through the same question type. Once you have this, then you're going to be completely prepared for the question that's thrown at you and you don't have to beat around the bush at all. And so what this means is if you're actually starting a UCAT preparation from the beginning, you need to take it slowly. You need to learn it step by step by step just like you would learn from a maths teacher who shows you how to go through a maths question. And then you have to worry about, you know, with that experience, trying to apply it yourself. Once you apply it yourself, you've got to reflect back on it and figure out what was good about it, what wasn't so good about it, and then think about the things that you can do for next time before you attempt that next question. I mention this every time that I do a UCAT video, but doing thousands and thousands of UCAT questions is not the way to become a pro at the UCAT. The UCAT is a skill-based exam, which means it really relies on you having a thorough thinking process for every question. And then once you keep doing these questions, you can do this cycle and then you can just rinse and repeat. Now, just make sure to keep in mind that practice does not make perfect. Only perfect practice this makes perfect. You have to be extremely critical and reflective with how you attempted a question. And that means you can maximize the learning opportunity from every question that you attempt. That is the best way and most efficient way to learn. There will be no waste of time because you should theoretically never make the same mistake twice because you've thought about why that happened and how to fix it. Let's take a look at this with an example. If you have an accuracy of 80% with UCAT questions, and that was when you were doing them slowly, if you speed it up and try and do the questions at the actual pace, your accuracy is just going to be lower than that because you're just going to introduce all those other stress factors with having a timer on. So your maximum score is going to be 80% accuracy and more than likely you're going to score less. And that's really not a good strategy to go on with the UCAT with. So that's actually why it's incredibly important to focus on two stages of your UCAT preparation. We've talked a little bit about the first one already, but it's mostly about mastering the questions on time. And then once you're really good with that, you can focus on speed and your exam taking techniques. So with the first stage, you need to really master those basics and understand every single step that you need to be doing and why you're doing it. You need to understand why you did this particular step before that step as well. For example, you need to understand why do you go about reading the whole passage for VR before even looking at the questions. And that is the most efficient way to do them, but it takes a very long time and a lot of skill to get up to doing that. Really in the first stage, you want to be aiming to hit 100% accuracy because of what I talked about before. And also the way to become the quickest at answering questions is by having 100% accuracy. If you make mistakes, 
and you realize that you made a mistake, then you have to go backwards and try and fix that mistake. If you have a lower accuracy, you're gonna be making mistakes and getting stuck at a lot of points in the question, which is just gonna waste time. And also, if you did have that odd chance where you realize that you made a mistake, you're gonna have to go backwards and redo the question to get it right. And that's assuming that you get it right. All those inefficiencies are going to start carrying through when you're speeding up and that will show in your score. The point that you actually have to get up to is being able to read a sentence once and understand it from there. That's just the most efficient way to be going through these things. And this is all necessary if you wanna be on the top of your game and scoring on that top 95 percentile for the UCAP. You don't ever wanna make the same mistake again because that just means you didn't spend the proper time towards fixing it the first time. And so you're actually just wasting time that you're putting towards and all the energy that you put towards studying for the UCAP. The second stage, as we said, was focusing on your exam taking strategy. And there is so much attached to this idea of sitting an exam. There's the exam stress and anxiety, keeping your focus and concentration at peak level and not getting distracted and then worrying about speed. All of these things should be focused after you have mastered the UCAT question sometimes. This is the point that you really get to figure out what is going wrong when you're trying to take an exam. It's not the point to figure out what questions you're not good at because you should be doing that when you're doing it untimed. And if you do this, well, you're just wasting the opportunity of testing yourself in exam condition because you're not even at your peak level. So basically what this means is that the huge majority of your time needs to be focused and getting good at those questions on time. Then the speed will just come really quickly and quite naturally if you can do that really well. It'll be so much easier for you to answer these questions if you're not wasting time in actually trying to answer the question because you're trying to backtrack or you didn't read the word correctly. That's just gonna be so much easier if you spend the time towards learning these on time. To put it simply, accuracy is so much more important than speed. And then you can worry about speeding up and they will come quite naturally and you shouldn't see too much of a decline in your accuracy. Feel free to leave a comment down below or DM me on Instagram if you have any questions about any of this stuff. If you've got value from this video, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.